Get excited, get excited. Gonna record a video, gonna record a video. Ha ha! What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and this is a modern nation. I'm gonna be pushing my Skylake processor to 4.9 gigahertz. Don't believe me? Stay tuned. Today is a follow-up video to the Skylake D-Lid and overclocking guides that I've already posted. If you haven't seen these videos yet, you can watch them by clicking on the card in the upper right corner. One of the problems that I ran to my Skylake overclocking guide was that I was not able to push my processor past 4.7 gigahertz. There's a limit to how much higher we can go in our overclock. We're really limited by the processor itself. Unless we decide to do a delitting tutorial. Wow, that was like video inception. And once I completed the delitting guide, I was able to reduce my temperature significantly. And you guys loved my videos. I received lots of comments from people saying that they had delitted their processor before they achieved great success or that they were able to overclock their processor having watched my guide. I love hearing your success stories. I love hearing hearing that stuff, so please send me more of your comments and questions. One such comment stood out in particular. This comment is from, and I'm, I apologize, I'm gonna pronounce your name wrong, Zujun. Essentially, they asked if I was able to push my Skylake overclock past 4.7 gigahertz after I'd done the delitting. Thank you for your question, Zujun. Now, I hadn't planned on doing an update video. The point of the Skylake delid was to lower the temperatures, not necessarily to improve my overclock. Although, it can be used for that too. So, I guess the question is now that I have more thermal headroom to overclock my processor, could I push that overclock from 4.7 to say 4.8? Or what about 4.9 even? Well, I didn't have an answer to that question, so I'm making this video. Today, we're gonna find out. All right, so I've got my programs loaded up, CPU-Z, hardware monitor, and X264. I've overclocked the processor to 4.8 gigahertz, as you can see here in CPU-Z. We're at 4.0, 4.03. Our temps are between 24 and 30 degrees C, uh, 40 degrees C, excuse me. Got X264 all set up. Now we've begun our stress test. Our, our cores are running at 100%, and it just crashed. So it looks like we're gonna have to to increase the voltage. We go into our BIOS, uh, I'm gonna increase the voltage to 1.45 volts, and we're gonna save, that's all we're doing. We're back in our desktop, and we'll notice that our idle temps are between 24 and 29 degrees Celsius. Start our stress test. Core temperatures are now between 58 and 72 degrees Celsius, so they've ramped up significantly at 4.8. One thing I wanna point out is the core voltage. This is what happens when your load line calibration is too high. You shouldn't be running the voltage higher than 1.45, so this is pretty dangerous what we're doing. Uh, thankfully, we're not running it for very very long. I didn't intend for this overclock to be a daily driver. I just wanted to show you that it could be done. I can't believe it. We actually passed the stress test. So now we're going to try for 4.9 gigahertz. Let's see if that'll happen. When we change the multiplier to 49, notice that our turbo mode frequency has changed to 4,900 megahertz. All we've done is change the multiplier to 49. Stock temps are between 24 and 31, it looks like. Uh, just to show you, I've got it at 1.45 volts at 4.9 gigahertz. I don't believe it. We're actually stressing it. And look at those temps. 46 to 57, 47 to 57 degrees. Ah, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm not actually using an X264 stress test. I'm using ADA64, which is another stress test that I had talked about before. I'm only stressing the CPU. And this might seem like a valid stress test, but consider this chart from overclock.net. You'll see that the temperature difference between X264 and ADA64, this isn't stressing it out enough. And this stress stresses, pun intended, the importance of using a consistent stress test tool to stress out your overclock. Something like ADA64 CPU only is not gonna be an adequate stress test. Um, I've been running this test now for about 15 minutes and it's doing fine. The CPU temps are even lower than they were at the 4.8 with X264. So be wary of the stress test that's being used. When people say that, oh yeah, it's stress test stable, ask them what stress test they were using and under what conditions. So so here we're gonna try that same exact one with X264 and ah, 
Look at that, it crashes within seconds. So that's the difference between X264 and ADA64 is make sure you understand what stress test you're using because different stress tests will produce different results. And, you know, and don't feel bad if your processor can't get higher than 4.6 because many processors don't overclock much higher than that. You'll be really lucky if you get a 4.7. I want you to pay attention to this chart that I made. This chart comes from Silicon Lottery, which is, I'm not advertising for them, but they're a business business that offers uh, binned chips. And what bin means is that they've tested them and determined that they can overclock to a certain amount. And what they do is they resell them to consumers at an increased price. This is percent of chips that are binned on our y-axis versus their overclocking potential. 93% of processors that Silicon Lottery has obtained were able to overclock to 4.6 gigahertz. As we increase our overclock, you see that the number of chips that can achieve those overclocks diminishes rather quickly. At 4.7, only 54%, so about half of the chips they receive uh, will hit 4.7. And then we get down to 4.8, which was the frequency that we were able to get to. Uh, only 17% of their chips are able to do that. And then once you get to 4.9, only 3% of their chips. Silicon Lottery said that only 2% or about one out of every 35, 60, 700k processors they receive are able to even hit 5 gigahertz. My processor, I would say, falls somewhere between the 4.7 and 4.8. I was able to get to 4.8 gigahertz stable. You just want to make sure that your overclock is going to be stable no matter what you throw at it. That's the most important part. Uh, so using ADA64 CPU only or just booting into Windows is not going to be sufficient enough to make sure that your overclock is stable. Well, I think I'm done making videos of you now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give me a like and share it with someone. It helps my channel grow tremendously. Leave me a comment down in the comment section. I want to know, do you like this shorter video format? I'm considering shorting, short, shorting. I'm considering shortening my other videos as well. Some of those clock in at about 10 minutes. If people respond favorably to them, I might consider doing this more in the future. Join the nation and subscribe today by clicking on that subscribe button. And when you do, make sure you click on the bell icon inside. That way you're notified the moment that I release new YouTube videos. And guys, I love your comments. I love your questions. Please send all your comments or questions to any of these social medias listed here. The best ways to get a hold of me are through Facebook or Twitter, but feel free to use any of them to reach me. And as always, I'll see you next time. Take care.